Welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's very special episode I will be showing you how to instantly rust metalwork projects with cheap and readily available chemicals that you can find at any grocery store. And that way you can take cool projects like this and make them even cooler with unique rust patinas. So let's go to it. Gross. In case you haven't noticed, I am growing an absolutely disgusting mustache this month because I am trying to raise awareness for cancer and I am also collecting some funds for cancer research. So if you would like to help me out with my goal of breaking roughly $5,000 this year, uh, I will put the link down in the video description below. Thank you very much in advance. All right, last video I showed you guys how to weld this thing up out of sheet metal, which is a really cool project. If you haven't seen that video already, I'll put a link above so you can watch that first. Uh, but I also put a poll out to my subscribers to let you guys decide what happened to this guy. And it came back that most of you wanted to see this thing rusted up in a two-tone finish. So some parts rusted and some parts left polished. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do in this video today. Now, rather than waiting around for months and months and trying to get this thing to slowly patina up, I did a little research and I have figured out a way to get this thing to rust up instantly. And so that's what I'm gonna show you right now. In order to make this super fast rusting concoction, you're gonna need some materials from the grocery store. And the first one is pure white vinegar. You don't need a ton of it, but you will need some of this. You will also need a 500 milliliter bottle of hydrogen peroxide and you will need just regular table salt. I didn't bring a whole box over to for the video. Uh, you don't need a lot. You need one teaspoon worth of salt. You can head over to the dollar store and you also need just a little spray bottle so that you can mix everything up in here and then be able to spray it onto your projects. You're gonna need a funnel maybe just to get all that inside of that spray bottle. And then for ease of cleanup, and in my case, I don't want to rust the top of my metal table. You just need a big garbage bag, so you can use it kind of like a tarp to protect your surfaces, and when you're all done, it's easy to clean up. Now, the art of taking this nice shiny metal and turning it into rusty metal is not a exact science. You're not going to get the perfect shade of color right from one end to the other exactly the same, and they're not going to match for different pieces. So it kind of has to be a little bit of trial and error. So get yourself some scrap pieces similar to what you're going to rust up and play around with a bunch of different stuff. Now, when I experimented, I found a couple things that were uh, an issue. One of them was, depending how clean the metal is, so if you've got fingerprints or grease or there's already a little bit of rust, that will affect what it looks like. So maybe soap and water and clean it up and wipe it down dry before you start doing the process. The other thing is the actual finish of it. So if you've got something polished, that's gonna be a little bit different than what pops when you have something scraped up with maybe some emery cloth, sandpaper, or even just like a roll lock disc. So you can play around with different patterns and textures and uh, you might get different results that are better for your project. Now I've already put all the ingredients into my little spray bottle here and given it a good shake for a couple minutes to make sure it's all mixed up. But I will put the recipe right here for you guys. It is 16 ounces or 500 milliliters, uh, this whole bottle of hydrogen peroxide. You need two ounces of white vinegar and one teaspoon of regular table salt. Give it a good shake for a couple minutes and you are good to go. So another thing that is going to affect the patina on your project here is how is that solution going to be staying on your project? So if you have it sitting flat, then it's going to be covered a little bit better. You'll get a darker, deeper patina. And if you have the pieces standing up, which is kind of how the fox is going to be, the chemicals won't be staying there long. They kind of just run off and then uh, rust as much as they can. So I'm doing a little tester here with you guys. I've got some pieces standing up and some laying down. We're going to spray them evenly and see what they look like. Now to make things extra interesting, I've added the pattern from sanding with a two inch roll lock disc, about 80 grit. 
And then the other one is 120 grit, just hand sandpaper, kind of like in one direction. And then the half of all these pieces has not been done anything, so it's just bare metal. So let's start spraying and see what happens. But once you've cleaned and got your material ready here, the very first thing you have to do is you actually have to kind of start this chemical reaction by putting on pure white vinegar only. So whether you get a second spray bottle or you can kind of just dump it on liberally, just make sure it's all coated. And then just let that sit for a couple of minutes, but make sure everything's evenly coated. Now for this process, because you are having a chemical reaction going on with this, it would probably be a really good idea to be wearing safety glasses, maybe even some gloves, and definitely do this in a well-ventilated area, just because of the chemical off-gassing that's happening. Okay, now for your fast rusting mix, and then I'm gonna put a clock up here so you can actually see the time here. And you can see pretty much instantly you have rust going on here. All right, now let's give it the super rust mix here. Just make sure the surface is coated and you can see it's starting to rust really well. All right, now it's a waiting game. Uh, I would recommend you come back every five or 10 minutes and then just give it another spray. And you probably repeat this for about half an hour, 40 minutes, really stop at the level of darkness and rust that you want. So it's been 30 minutes now and you can see that these things have rusted up beautifully. If you want them darker, you just keep rusting and go for longer. You'll get a deeper rust going. Now, one thing to think about as well is it is very cold in my shop right now. It's November. Uh, so heat kind of plays a, a factor in this too. If you wanted this to happen uh, better and faster than doing this out in the sun would probably be a lot better. In fact, I'm wondering what's going to happen here when I take this off. Okay, not bad. Kind of an interesting kind of bloom pattern on it. It's not very steady. That's kind of got a patchy look to it. All right, same thing going on there. All right, now something a little interesting on these guys. You can see we've got the rust going, but because this was sitting in the vinegar at the bottom there, it actually kind of prevented it from rusting the same amount. So something to note, don't have any pooling vinegar when you put it on there. One thing to note about these super fast patinas is this is kind of superficial. This is all just kind of sitting on the top of the surface. This is not truly rusted this deep and dark into the base metal. So if you disturb it with your finger or you wash it or wipe it with a cloth, it's not going to look like this. So depending on what level of rust you want it to look like, uh, just keep that in mind. Now, if you do kind of want to keep it as close as you can here, you're going to have to let this dry completely and then not touch the surface, otherwise you're gonna wreck the way it looks, and very, very carefully some, apply some kind of clear coat to it. Uh, in my case, I don't want this thing to be super shiny and wet looking, so I'm gonna do a matte clear coat uh, on probably this kind of uh, finish is what I'm gonna be looking for for mine, because I'm not gonna lay down the fox completely. So, uh, what I'm talking about is this. So you can see that if I kind of disturb this, it, it's not truly rusty, and the harder I push, the more I can take off. And uh, it's a little more visible if I take a cloth. So you can see it's not fully rusted to the depth and the darkness that's there. Now, the other thing you can do is you can take this to the sink and lightly wash a little bit of that scale kind of bloom off. And then I can go with that as well. So now that these samples have been rinsed off, you can see that this is not a hard science. It's just kind of messing with the chemicals, playing with different kind of techniques and strategies to get the different shades and colors that you want. So mess around with it, figure out what you want, and then tackle your project. So for us, on to the main event. Let's get the fox going. 
But as you guys requested, we're gonna be doing a two-tone finish on this guy. We're gonna have rust and polished panels. And the polished panels are gonna represent the areas on a fox that are white. So on the ears, belly, and the tip of the tail. Now, I'm gonna be using masking tape to cover up those areas and hopefully we don't get rust in there. But worst case scenario, if it does get a little bit in there, then we can just finish polish them after. So let's get started. Cool, with it all masked up, you kind of have an idea of the two-tone and what it'll kind of look like. Uh, but here comes the scary part. Uh, now we turn this 50-hour welded sheet metal project into a big pile of rust. Fingers crossed. Let's go. Kind of nerve-wracking to actively rust up something you put so much time and energy and effort into, but uh, this is where all the magic happens. So let's get going here. So it's been 30 minutes with three sprays in between, so roughly every 10 minutes, and I am happy with the way this looks. It looks amazing. It's got a great ruddy kind of brown orange look to it, and uh, I think it'll look great with that two-tone. So the plan for me right now is I have it on a base here so I can kind of delicately move it out of the way without touching it, because remember this is all just got kind of surface rust, and uh, I'm gonna let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow we're gonna hit it with some clear coat. So, I'll see you tomorrow. So it's 24 hours later now and this is all dried up and it has gone from a kind of solid really dark brown ready look to more of an orange and kind of slightly patchy kind of red orange brown look and I think it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, so the next part of this is to very very carefully take off this masking tape without touching the rust because it's just surface rust and then uh, see what it looks like underneath and if it's polished then uh, we're good to go for a clear coat. So let's start taking this tape off. Oh yeah, that looks pretty awesome. So I'm pretty pleased with that masking tape mask. Uh, you can see, for the most part, it did not go through that masking tape at all. Uh, so in general, I do not have any grinding to do. Now, if I zoom in, there are a couple spots here that we will have to kind of touch up. But 
overall, uh, pretty happy with that masking tape mask. I uh, did a pretty good job. So on to just kind of lightly touching those up with that Rolock disc, probably with an 80 grit or see if I can find something even a little bit finer than that. And then we can get on to the clear coating. This is all cleaned up now with a 120 grit Rolock disc and now all the little, little tiny patches of rust are gone and it is all polished back up. So on to the last step, which is clear coat. So I did order some matte clear coat. So I'm hoping that this thing doesn't turn out super shiny um, and the color will darken a bit, but we'll just have to see what it looks like after. So here it goes. So with a first coat of the matte clear, uh, man, did it ever really go dark. It went way darker than even before. So uh, we'll just have to see what this looks like when it dries. I was planning on giving it more than one coat, so maybe two or even three fine coats. Uh, it's a lot darker. Uh, I really, really hope that it does kind of lighten up here as it dries, because uh, it's looking almost brown red, let alone orange. I kind of liked the look of it before. Uh, so we'll just have to see, but we'll let this dry up and we'll take a look at it in a bit. <sighs> Disaster strikes. I was wondering how long it was going to be before I made a video that somehow went sideways and end up having to film it. Well, this might be it. So if you can see, it has gone extremely dark. It's almost brown. Uh, and then it's got something going on where it, I don't know if it's the matte clear coat or what, but it has gone kind of like white almost powdery looking but it's just white in the color there uh, it could be something reacting with the chemical solution that was left over there I'm not really sure so i'm going to do one more coat of clear coat and then see what it looks like and hopefully it looks a lot better it's probably still going to be really dark though uh, and then i got two options i guess leave it or leave the clear coated polished parts and then uh redo the whole rusta application after re-grinding all of this clear coat and stuff off here so give it another coat see what it looks like kind of sucks i almost wish i had left it but maybe you can use my mistake for your projects if you wanted it, that beautiful orange look then maybe don't clear coat it or it could have been smart it could have done some sample pieces and clear coated those and then i would have seen this It's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench and on how to become a welder. This time on how to chemically rust up your welded metal art sculptures. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun making this guy and even though it took like 55, 60 hours to get to this point, uh, and it was a lot of frustration and testing my patience and skills, at the end of the day when I sit back and look at this thing, uh, there is a definite sense of pride and ownership in what I've done here. And uh, ultimately, I'd love to be able to get you guys to have that feeling too when you start making your own welded projects. 
Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about what happened in this video, just put them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And hey, if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram uh, at Way of the Wrench. Uh, until next time, take it easy.